Hey guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. If this is your first time here, go ahead and do me a big favor and hit that subscribe button because I'm going to give you some useful content on Blender. Um, and in this one, we're going to be going over the space city, right? It's like a little space station. That emission is crazy. Let me turn that down just a little bit. Okay, that's pretty cool. So I got some pretty neat textures here. And what I did is I just kind of went through and created some uh, geometry nodes for this. And it's really nothing too complex, just a few different nodes and I'll explain everything and we'll make it nice and procedural. And then we're gonna actually go through and apply some textures and apply the geometry nodes and make a small scene. So before I do that though, I would like to jump on over to my sponsors and I am sponsored by a couple of different people. Mesh Poly is one of them and in my previous tutorial where I made a space station pretty much instantly uh, I used mesh, mesh poly for that it's pretty powerful and so if you go through you can make all kinds of things like cave systems you can make all kind of levels you can make extreme extrusions like it would take you a hundred nodes to make this thing right and so you just go through and you can make a lot of procedural effects and it just cuts so much time out. It's only $6, real easy. And then for the uh, next one that I work with and sponsors me, just to be s completely transparent, that's Philogic's PBR Painter Pro. Uh, it's a little pricey, but it's definitely worth it because what you can do is you can bake all your maps and then you can use smart textures. You can create your own custom textures and layers. It's incredible. And if you've ever used Substance Painter, then you're gonna love this because you can jump right in on layers and it's just uh, learning it as an add-on because it's just an add-on just in the window so it's an end panel um, add-on and it's incredibly powerful for what you get which is a lot so enough of that let's jump right in to the tutorial all right so jumping right in um, this is the space station here and we can take this a bunch of different ways and I'm sure once I go over this you'll be able to kind of modify this in your own way. Nothing here too complex, may take a little bit of time and I've got these extrusions if you will and they kind of play into being uh, corridors. Now I did scale this before I applied my geometry nodes and I won't do that in the actual tutorial that we're doing so that way if you want to get in here and kind of like deck out one of these hallways and make an animation then you can go ahead and do that and now it's not necessary but i did throw a sun in here to make a little bit of a shadow give it just a little bit more realism and kind of um, show off some of the neat textures here with this procedural setup that we're going to create all right let's go for it all right so if you haven't done it yet, you can get Mesh Poly. You don't have to have it for this particular tutorial, but it's super helpful. So I'm just going to go over this real quick and show you. Once you've installed, it goes just like uh, any add-on, right? So you just go in to your edit, go into your preferences, and you click install, and then find it wherever it was, possibly downloads, right? And then just click on Mesh Poly, click install add-on, come up here, and it should just pop up, and you can check it on. And you can either save your preferences if you have auto save on you should just be able to hit the X glitches being what they are sometimes it does not work out too good I'm gonna go ahead and turn on my screencast keys so you can see where I'm going all right so if you were to take this add-on and just go in to the face extruder and extrude this you get that no matter what you do you get this and whereas that is pretty cool and you could do a lot with that it's not what I'm after so a couple ideas here what we'll do is just kind of go back jump into edit mode and what it would do in the original one is I just subdivided this I'm just gonna go over this real quick I put somewhere around 15 subdivisions then back in edit mode I had this set to something kind of like one ish and this set to something like five and just hit extrude Boom. And now you instantly have got the space city that I was going to make. But because Blender and the community is what it is, and we're all doing these tutorials basically for free, um, I'm going to show you a way to make this pretty much exact using geometry nodes, and it won't take too long. Now if I was just to switch over to 
EV engine, which is my material preview. Let's see, I've got all the scene lights and scene world on, that's fine. And then I just threw that texture on top. And then, and in order to get that, I'm gonna have to jump over to the shading tab. And so if I wanted to kind of change this about, because it starts off pretty high, I don't like it up there, so you can bring it down to wherever you want, something kind of manageable. And you could randomize the pattern a little bit if you want. You can change the emission and make it a little bit brighter if you want, but that's pretty good. And so you see how quick that is, right? Just made that, and then you can throw an HDR of space with Blender Kit behind it and do that free. Jump over to the layout. And once I've got that pulled up, I can just drop an HDRI. I'll just make it 2048, it really doesn't matter. And that's pretty much it, right? Boom, you can do that. Now you can put in some other geometry nodes and have stars flying around and all kind of cool stuff. But you need some kind of base, some kind of focal point, something that people can look at and see and go, ooh, that's cool, but all the effects don't mean much unless you have something neat. And so you can make your little camera animation like I did in the previous video, and you've got these neat little corridors to work with. So if you were to kind of go in here, uh, there are some light emissions in here. You can just drop in a point light and kind of bring that down a touch. Well, whatever, you can do... Okay, I'm gonna fight this. <laughs> Point zero zero five. <laughs> okay, that's weird, but anyways, you get the general idea. And so, now you can create this super fast, mesh poly, six bucks, done. Um, I know I sound like I'm pushing that, but it's really, really simple this way. So, what we'll do is, I'll just go ahead and kill this, I'm not gonna save it. And we're going to jump right over into Geometry Nodes. I'm going to join this up. And if you haven't used Geometry Nodes before, then this will be a treat. If you're familiar, then follow along. So I'll just click New. What I'm going to do is, I have uh, Node Wrangler on, so I'm going to Control, right click, slash, take that off. I'm going to leave my input there though. I need something more controllable. So I'm going to type in Cube with the spacebar search. Come down, not the volume cube, but I'm going to pull in the, and it's always add shift A is the one that works, mesh primitives cube. Now I'm just going to plug this in, and boom, we got a cube back. <sighs> Only now we've got all these nifty controls, right? So a couple things that we've got to do here to make this work. First thing we're going to have to do is subdivide this, and there's two options for that and only one of them is what we're going to use. So if you type in subdivide mesh shift A and then you go in and you type in subdivide again you'll see you have a subdivision surface. Now if you know anything about Blender you understand that if you were to bring these levels up you'll probably crash Blender. Not always. You got a fast computer it's fine but it's really going to put a lot of stress on the scene and we are not using subdivision surface at all. So get that out of there. What we are going to use is this subdivide mesh. So we'll drop in the subdivide mesh and bring that up to something like three. Now I've subdivided it. Now what I want to do next is I want to split the edges. So I'll get a split edges and you'll see nothing has really happened just yet and that's okay. And so I'm just going to keep making a little bit of room here. Now I can drop in a scale and you'll see why we are using a scale elements node shortly. So it's not doing anything just yet. And now I'm going to drop in an extrude, which is self-explanatory. We're going to extrude our mesh. So now we've got that basic extrusion that we kind of started with before we had subdivided but the funny thing is you've already subdivided so what gives what's going on here well you have to start um, changing things and offsetting it so that way you can get those individual extrusions off of all of the faces because if you scale it right now that's all you get right there so what we can do is kind of dial back the scale just a little bit and now you've got some very nice uniform um, 
extrusions and it looks kind of cool but it's still not what we're after uh, so what I want to do is I want to maybe scale this back a little bit more and what I'm also going to do because the cube values over here are kind of meshed up if you will no pun intended um, so what I want to do is I want to turn all of these into one controllable integer value. So in order to do that, you just drag one of these out, type I-N-T-E-R, should be able to get an integer. And now I'm just gonna take each one of these and plug it in. And now we're back to our, our cube. It looks like it destroyed everything, but it really didn't. So if you just click on it a couple times, you'll see that you have now got something a little bit more uh, controllable procedurally and it looks pretty good so now very simple I want to come over to the extrude and the offset value is uh, pretty good so but it's still not what I want so what I want to do is just drag this out and type in random and I'm sure everybody knows the random value and now we're starting to get somewhere this is kind of starting to look like the original which is the idea but making the original procedural is kind of more powerful that way um, I still like the mesh palette add-on superior to this I don't want to sit here and play with all this stuff if if you're trying to do something in production you don't have time for this usually so you can do a scale out the max you can scale the min just a little bit as well and voila that looks pretty close so at this point, I mean, you could play with the seed value. I don't think that's going to matter too much. I'm actually going to leave that at zero so I can mess around with this. And just for a little extra control, we can pull the selection off of the extrusion. And that, if you just type in random again, it's automatically going to come up as a Boolean. And now you can kind of play around with the probability and give it just a little bit more thickness or a little less depending on how you want to design it and now I've got this pretty ugly gap in the middle and you guessed it you probably already know what I'm getting ready to do so I'm gonna type in join geo pull up my join geometry node and then I'll go back over here to my group input which I had already severed and let's just run this thing over and tag it in and so now even though the scale is off just a little bit I could actually change that and all you have to do for that is to come back to your original cube and kind of match it up so if I was over here and say it's like way too big right um, you can get the exact measurement if you want. I'm just winging it for this and I can bring it down about there. Looks good. Now it looks like it's actually coming out of something. Now for the corridors, which is what we're doing most of this for, so that you can have your corridor, you can run the scale up just a little bit and make your corridors a little bit bigger. So that way you can do some things with them. And all of this actually looks pretty good so now I'm gonna come back over to the layout and what we can do is go into the material preview and see how this all falls and you'll notice that the materials when you go to drop one on there doesn't really do much and turn on the world lights um, and that is because over in the geometry nodes area, right after the join, or actually right here, you can put in a set material node. And then anything you've just added, it'll be in this list. So I've got the, um, the AB cartilage, which is going to pop up here as well. So if I click that to add it, and I suppose it would help if I was in material preview here as well then you'll see it added it and it didn't really do too good of a job it doesn't look bad but obviously not the look that we we're going for but if you don't have a material showing up that is because 
your set material is not there. So if I was to, here, let's pull this because I'm tired of going back and forth. I'm gonna turn this into an asset browser. I know it's getting kind of tight in here. Let's move some of this around. Okay, that's weird. It wasn't showing up in geometry nodes, so I just switched over. And so you just pick anything you want. I've got some faves here. Let's see, I'll pull this one. And it should load, but it doesn't. So you have to go over to your geometry nodes, and guess what? Here's Sci-Fi 2. So you select Sci-Fi 2. And it doesn't really show up too good. So you could get effectively any texture you want and then come over here and see if you can find a scale for it. And if you don't see anything here, you can try to jump into the shading tab. I know there's a lot there, but don't worry about it. All you'd be doing is coming over to the mapping area. And I have no idea why there's keyframes in there, but I'm gonna take those out. And what you could do is you can just left click and drag down and then just move your mouse left and right but I'm not getting any play on this texture so the original texture that I have set for this and let's see let's do something real quick so we can stop going back and forth what I'll do is I'm gonna tag in a few different things here what I'll do is I'll tag in the scale to the output so you can just drag that in I think we can definitely drag in the minimum and the maximum. And the integers are just gonna be where they're at and the subdivision level. And that seems like that's good enough. I guess we can do the probability as well. And now all that's in the input. So if we go back to layout and go to our um, modifier tab will have these different values and kind of play with these values now and do whatever you want with them and now we can have a little bit more fun modifying so if I was to take this texture kind of drop it right there in the middle it'll drop on our cube right so that leaves uh, that makes a pretty neat um, effect right there and then if I was to take say the scale and bring the scale to like back to point four where I originally had it then you get a lot of that light transmission coming through there that's pretty neat and then you can add a different texture out here or you can add the same texture and that's still under geometry nodes so I do have to go back to that and I suppose I could change that as well but we'll just add it there now I'll go back to the shading for this one and you'll have to go into the shading tab and you can mess with the scale and bring it down considerably something like that looks pretty cool and then I'll go to the material tab and I want the emission down a little that's kind of crazy that looks pretty good I'll go back to the layout there you go so you're starting to have something here and at this point it's really up to you what you do with this thing uh, you can mess around with the probability which gives you uh, an actual control instead of the seed value. The seed value is kind of not very helpful. So you can mess with the probability or you can just have one or two things here, whatever you want to do. And now from this point, I just go in to my blender kit and I will pull up an HDR, something like space. And then you've got a few different things to choose from here. Some of them are locked. You can unlock them if you wish. And I'll put the 40, put the 4K one in and make sure that my scene world is turned back on. And whereas I don't really like the red on there, this texture works pretty good for this model. Now, if you don't want the geometry nodes and the set material and all the other stuff sitting there, like it's it's messing with you and go back and forth and you've got this kind of set where you want it the probability and everything so I mean I could turn the scale to like 0.5 which is good and increase the probability so I've got some more to work with I can level it up if I wish 
and that is the um, subdivide level so you can make this thing kind of crazy if you want it really makes the textures look cool and then you can just click apply and you'll notice that it kind of throws the texture off so you may have to reset that go back in and redo the scale and then after that you can get your timeline and start animating and say put a camera in your scene and I'll drop one in here real quick just for the fun of it and I'll hit control alt zero and I have it set on uh, quick favorites the flying navigation it's really hard to use you got to get good to use it but if you wanted to you go to uh, view go to navigation and you've got walk navigation or fly navigation you can click on that and then as you kind of move the mouse around it's like um, it's almost like you're flying and you just roll the mouse wheel forward and you can kind of do a little inspection so you'd have to kind of add a keyframe first so if you're on like frame one you can hit um, and my texture just came back kind of weird that's what uh, that happened you hit a um, location rotation scale when you're doing the camera and come out to frame 100 and I've got it on quick favorites so I just hit Q and then my fly navigation and you, you can go really fast you have to be kind of careful but if I just kind of wanted to scan through my environment and then left click and hit I location rotation scale and hit play kinda got this neat little pan fade away and why did that change the scale that is bugging me out there we go let's fix that alright so now hit play okay so that's some kind of a bug uh, anyways you get the general idea I hope you learned something from this and you're able to implement this and you can use that on a sphere to make something crazy if you want and then you've got these corridors to work with and I still had the uh, I did move the scale I said I wasn't gonna do that but I did anyways this would make a really cool uh, run through if you were going to like put the camera in here and then you'd have to delete your keyframes and then get back in there and I'll just hit Control alt 0 to bring the camera back in and just kind of hit the rotate until I get it lined up where I want. There we go. And now if you want to run down these corridors, you need to know this. Uh, make it a lot easier on you. You can hit from global to local and then go from bounding box center, which is where it's at, to individual origins. Now if you hit G and Z it'll run in a lot more of a straight line and then if you kind of were to come out and hit one and come over here and like maybe slightly break weight on the camera let's zoom back out let's get this right so if I hit one and like put the mouse cursor right there and line the camera up and then go over and press N go to view and lock camera to view now I can line this baby up perfect and then run straight down the corridor and then you can do like I did in the previous um, where I actually took this animation ran a guy down the corridor and then I'd put a build modifier on one of the outside panels so as he approached the uh, panel actually disappeared and then my guy went straight through so anyways that's just some ideas for you i hope that helps you out thank you for watching hit that like and subscribe button and i'll see you guys in the next video